we're live. Yay, Yay. we're live. Yeah, I hope we get some people today. Let's see what time. 3.02. They should be showing up pretty quick. Yeah, no problem. I think. Anyway, <clears throat> what we're going to do today is I am going to do a little teaser class. <clears throat> In other words, you know I have my class called Uptown Boho. It's going to start in two weeks from today. Um, there are going to be a lot of techniques in that class, but also we're going to be making things too, um, putting things together. Then we're going to be using a lot of textiles rather than a lot of jewelry making stuff. You know, we'll do some. <clears throat> we might take out, maybe use both. I have some earring designs that we're going to work on that we'll use both. Um, but yeah, we're going to go a little different this time. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to make one of those big fancy necklaces. We're going to do several statement brooches. One has a vintage lady face in it. And also we'll review on how you could reproduce something like that in a mold with epoxy sculpt if you want to do it. Um, just a lot of little review things but a lot of little new things put together. And until this class is over, you're going to be brimming with new ideas because I know I'm, I can't wait to do Uptown Boho number two. And then from there, who knows where I'm going to go with this. I've just got all kinds of new ideas that I want to do using <clears throat> old laces and paper flowers and uh, fabric flowers that we make and put together. Um, sorry ribbon, of course, satins, tulle, all kind of stuff like that to make something kind of unique and different. <clears throat> For example, hey, here we got some people. Who's here? <laughs> Andrea, Dara, of course. Colleen. Colleen. Hi, Colleen. And she says she's, she's a chicken. Yeah, here he is. Yeah, he's a chicken. Chicken, chicken, chicken. I got real chicken over there. <laughs> yeah, she put the real chicken. <laughs> da, 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 da. This is the real chicken. Yeah, that's the real live <laughs> the flesh real chicken. Live chicken. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, by my doing this too, I don't want you to think that I'm going to get away from jewelry making. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. no. This is just... No, too... no, no. This is extra. Yeah. This is a, on top of that, you yeah. know. And we may get to the place where we're even doing a little sewing. I've got plans. And you might say, oh, geez, I'm not a sewer. I don't have a sewing machine. You know what? For the most part, if you could sew on a button, you're good. And if you can't sew on a button, tell me. We'll take a few minutes and I'll show you how. Because I got a good way. See, I haven't used a sewing machine for a while. But previous to that, I used it every day. From the time I was about 14 or 15 till, oh, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 years ago. And then I just, you know, I got really busy doing the antiques and stuff and eBay and, and traveling to source parts and all that, that I just, I just like, you know, let me buy my clothes. <laughs> I'll find them on sale or something. So that's what I did. And I didn't even have my sewing machine up. I mean, it was here in the office with me. My father-in-law bought it for me when I got married. But, um... I just wasn't using it, and then finally, my friend San Juana, who lives down in Mexico, she has a house down there, what's it called, San Ciro de Acosta, I think, is the name of the, the town, and it's old Mexico, it is not, you know, like Cancun, Mexico, it is old Mexico, with, they still have the Iceman and donkeys in the streets, that's, you know, but it's very quaint and lovely, anyway, she has a house there, and she has a lot of friends, and some of the ladies like to make things to sell to, you know, make enough money to take care of the kids and all that. So I said, why is my sewing machine sitting here? They always go down. <clears throat> so Juana and Jesse always go down there with a the truck. So I said, hey, would you like to take my sewing machine and give it to your friend? And she goes, oh, my, she'll just love it. Oh, she'll be over the moon. I says, well, please take it. Take it. I want her to have you tell her that. I want her to have it. And I want her to do good with it. Because it's, it's, it was used hard, but it's been, been well, well maintained. So anyway, so they took that about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. And so I've not had a sewing machine until a couple weeks ago. And I'm starting to realize I missed it. 
you know, so I have some ideas of things. I don't want to get like into making tons of stuff with the sewing machine, but I'm kind of enchanted by these boho purses and things like that. And so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But for now, there are all these little pieces, parts like there are such cool tassels we could make. They're so easy. If you see them being sold, they go for decent money. And they look so cool on your purse. You know, we could be doing that. And a lot of hair ornaments. And I don't mean just like little girl hair ornaments. I mean something really cool. Maybe even like a fascinator. Um, I'm into learning about junk journaling now. I know a lot of people like that kind of thing. Well, we could do that. So just a lot of things that we could do with Beast of Boutique's products as well as things I'm sourcing and bringing in. I'm finding wonderful things wonderful things at affordable prices so we'll have a section for that on the website after I finish packing the kits for this class which are far more extensive than I planned them to be but of course that's me I always you know, pack them full and fuller you know um, but there'll be some things left over and then we'll put them on the website but yeah anybody who takes this class who gets a kit and I think we have six classes with a kit left. I know I could do another six kits, probably more, but I'm just saying six for now. Um, they're not going to be sorry they did it. They're going to have such a fun time when they open that kit. Oh my goodness. It's not just a wad of sorry women. If that's what you thought, wait and see. It's not at all. So anyhow, but today I'm going to make two styles of flowers. I was going to reserve them for the class, but and now let's just do a little teaser class here. Let's have a little bit of fun. And I'll show you what I've been making because I'm trying to get myself up to snuff on them too. I've learned how to make about 10 different types of flowers now. And so I'm going to give you two types that are super simple. And the first one doesn't require any sewing, which is awesome. You know, all you got to have all you gotta have to make this rose is you need some of these little things here. Scrunchy? Yeah. They're these little tiny clear rubber bands, you know? Oh, the little rubber bands. You know. So you, you need some of those. And uh, you need some material. And you need a decent scissors, which I'm telling you what, I bought a couple of really good pairs of scissors here lately. I should have probably bought Fiskars, or I don't even know if they still make Ginger. Um, those were always real good ones, but um, I did buy some good scissors, and they're they're good. I like them, but I I just can't get past these Tim Holtz tonic scissors for this kind of thing. I mean, I just I wouldn't want to cut out a dress with this these, but um, for the little things that I'm doing, I'm like, yeah, oh hey okay, yeah, you know. So. Um, I love them. I don't carry them anymore, but if any of you guys really, really want them, I think I can still get them, and I'll check into it, and we'll get you a current price. They weren't cheap, but they weren't horrible. They were under $20, and I have three pairs of them because I lose things. Ask Javi. <laughs> <laughs> I lose things all the time, so I always know where I can find them. In fact, actually, I have four pair because I have one in my... Uh, sack that I keep that I take with me you know like it's like a go bag especially if I have to go to the hospital um I have to have that in there because there are things that I have to cut for my uh, medical supply so anyway so yeah but I have four of them and I don't regret a pair of them not one I use them all the time love them love them love them okay let's see who else is is here that I missed yeah Kate B Betty um Gloria. If you can Jan. turn it this way just a little bit, I'll be able to see too. Jan's here, yeah. Beansy. Beans. Cheryl. Hi there, Cheryl. I Hi. think you're new to us. I'm so glad you did. You stopped. Come and Hello, hang everybody. out with us. You're going to like us. We're nice people. Hey. <laughs> hey. We have fun. Okay, so we have a good start. Here's Gloria. It says, Hi, Miss Gloria. Where's Gloria? Let's see, Gloria. Oh, there she is. Hi, girls. How you doing, Miss Gloria? Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to show you the two 
that we're going to work on today, okay? Um, this is one I made last night. And this is your typical, I guess it goes this way, cabbage rose. With, and that is sorry silk. And I have some others in here, which were in a picture that I shared not long ago. This is the eyelash sorry. Um, see, this one also is eyelash sorry. Let's see once I got down in here. This one was a funny no so sorry ribbon one, but I put a doily in the middle of it. Um, it's a little purple eyelash sorry. And here's another one wrapped. I made one from torn muslin too, and I'm not quite sure, of course, where I put it. Wouldn't you know that? Um, so there's a bunch of them down in there. Oh, here it is. I didn't sew it off yet to finish it, but that's um, that's one made from torn cotton muslin. I sort of sewn it up, maybe to see if. So what I need to do is come back here and just tack stitch a little bit of it down. You don't have to get crazy with it and get every little nook and cranny, just a few. And then I'll trim these off probably. But I like this one. You know what would be cool with this is if you made a bunch of these and then you took um, like those, um, that spray color that kind of spritzes all over the stuff that people in scrapbooking use. Tim Holtz makes a lot of it. If you get, you know, hit this with uh, some of those. Or just take the whole thing and put it down in hot coffee or tea. And tea dye it, then do a little of that. Could get, I mean, this could get really exciting, let me tell you what. I've been watching some uh, stuff about a lady who takes old fabrics like, like this, or sheets. She tears sheets down sometimes, and she dyes them in her washer. And I don't know how you girls feel about that, but uh, that scares, scares me a little bit. I don't know if I want to be dying... Uh, uh, fabric in my washer but she says she never has any problem with it she does a dye and then what she does is um she rinses she does a cycle where she rinses it all out then she does a cycle with i think she said vinegar and biz detergent or something something that really takes color away and stuff and um cleans it up really good and then after that the first load she does is dark like jeans and she's never had any problem. And she's also said she could take stuff out of the dye bath, um, bring it out real good, and she can either take it and put it over the line outside, or she throws it right in the dryer. And never had any problems. So I don't know if I'm bold enough to try that or not. Anybody ever do that? Is anybody here ever like, um, did Dunrit dye or something? I know we dye with Kool-Aid. Dara, Dara discovered all about that. Probably could, probably could dye this with Kool-Aid. They wouldn't have to worry so much, huh? <laughs> about your, but I mean, she's dyeing great big garments and stuff. But um, oh, they came out gorgeous, just gorgeous. And she says that she always does them in the dryer, even if she dries them outside, because it heat sets them. So they became, they become color fast. So, I mean, just so many things you can learn about fabric. So that might be something to do with something like this. But the thing about it is, is, okay, why do we want to make all this stuff? Well, first of all, you can make, like, an amazing statement brooch with it. Like, um, say you take this one and, um, what do I have here? I had a bunch of them made up. I made a bunch of these lace ones last night. this one this one's this is a no sew rose too this one is and this one is no sew no sewing so i think i tacked that one in the middle end to be honest with you now let's just say i did this you know it's kind of like assemblage only we're using you know um cloth stuff as you sew that all together and maybe you could um loop in there a little bit of drippy pearls or some rip tattered um ribbon or stuff to hang down, uh, maybe sew a few buttons in there, whatever, put it all together, and you would have an amazing brooch to put on a jean jacket. Think about it. 
or if you're not one to want to layer all that together, well, just do one. Hey, Javi says, what are you going to do with it? Because I just finished making this. This was an experiment because I used, like, heavy trim lace for this. And this is a paper flower, actually. I didn't make this. Um, I just like to mix it. I love paper flowers. I used to carry them all the time, but I haven't recently. But I do have some coming in soon. Um, but anyway, I use this heavy border and some trim stuff. This trim is in your kits. This one right here. Everybody's getting a little bit of that. Um, this other one, I don't know if I'm going to be able to put it in all the kits or not. Just a little snip. But anyway, I put them all together and pulled them out. And then I took out to show Javi and Jordan. And I said, look, what do you think? And they said, well, it's beautiful. Well, what is it going to be? And I said, well, it could be a lot of stuff. It could be, of course, a hair bread, you know, hair ornament. Um, it could be something like you sew, you sew into something else, like even a necklace thing. Um, it could be part of a hand flower. Wouldn't that be pretty? Or you could make it a corset, corsage style and just bond it to a cuff or make uh, an elastic cuff. Or something like that to put it on, you know. Or a band that has snaps in the back to hold it. Or um, loops with um, buttons. You see them, girls make them on Etsy. And they get a lot of money for them, you know. I don't know. I guess it depends on how long it takes you. And how long it took you to find the stuff that you want to put on. Because some of them are pretty elaborate. But you don't really have to get a lot of money into them. That's the thing. You know, I like that. And it's what you put with them. So you could have that. Um, it could be a brooch on its own. Wouldn't it be cute on just a, a spring jacket or even a, a little uh, denim jacket? You could put that on. Or you can make a big honker, too, and put on a denim jacket. Those are awesome. So, I mean, there's just so many things. The more you make them, the more you're going to say, well, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. So, anyway, so let's just um, go from here. And I'm going to show you how to make one like this, which is basically the same thing, same technique as I use this. Now, you might say, well, that really? Are you sure, Brenda? Because they don't look like... It's because it has a lot to do with what kind of fabric you use or trim, if you use trim or whatever. Ooh, a headband. It has a lot to do with that. Yeah, headband would be good. That's what Jan said. I wear headbands a lot. Today, I have a scrunchie all tied up in a little string of hair on the side to keep my hair out of my eyes. It looks kind of crazy. But anyway, yeah, I wear a lot of headbands, so maybe this is up my alley, huh? So anyways, let's make one. So anyhow, you start out with a long strip. I'll tell you how long. This isn't that long, but it's longer. I'm going to trim this up a little bit, though, first. And it doesn't have to be cut just right or anything. I mean, imperfection is fine here. You don't have to worry about imperfection. And then you just maybe want to cut yourself a little card. It'd be two and a half inches this way. And three and a half this way. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just do it, you know, by eyeball. You don't have to do it, but... It was suggested, and I thought, well, maybe a good way to, you know, for me to start to show you how to do it, you know. Personally, I don't know that I would continue to do it, but um, it's a good way to start. Maybe visualize what it is you're going to do. Maybe. So I'm going to measure this piece that I cut off. And it's a foot, about one three quarters foot. long. Longer might be a little better, but you don't want to get it too long because then your flower will get too thick. So I would say, you know, go easy on it until you've made a few at least anyway. So you could, if you wanted to, you could, you know, double it over on itself or not. I'm going to try it by not doing that because I haven't yet. So we're going to see so you take it, and you're, we're going to wrap this 
around his piece of cardboard with the short side this way and the long side the bottom. Okay, we're just gonna wrap it. I'm gonna try to pull it up as far as I can to get the end, you know. And then I'm just gonna start wrapping. It does not have to be all even either. It can be wonky and off and no problem. Okay, so now I wish it had been a little longer, but I think it's still gonna work. So I'm just gonna slide this off here. I'm gonna get hold of it real good, slide it off. Might be easier said than done. Okay, now I need one of my little squinchy gills here, my little, my little um, Irvine. And I wanna get this down so it looks like a bow, kind of, sort of. Okay, don't worry that this one's hanging out because I found in making these, like you might see somebody on uh, TV, YouTube, whatever, doing these and they just pull them out and they're done. That, it doesn't work for me. They need to be trimmed, I think. So I'll show you how I do it, providing that we have enough on this. So I'm just gonna take my little thing and I'm going to try to get it as much in the middle as I can. So it'll be, you know, even on both sides. Could you use ribbon or any kind of string in the middle? You could, but I think this is better because it's not as bulky. And you do really just don't want a lot of extra bulk here. Okay, so this is hanging out. Actually, this might kind of look good because I fold it over and so. Okay, so it doesn't look half bad, even, you know, how it is, just for a cute little thing, but it's gonna get better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut now. So we're gonna find our folds here and go through the middle. And try to stay right at the edge if we can. And you might have to find it several times Okay, it's gonna need trimmed. So about that. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the other side. And you might say, well, I would just prefer to have a loopy bow, because you could, you know, there's loopies here, and not do that. Okay, fine, then have a loopy bow. I mean, it's up to you. If this gives you an idea of how to do something else, then hey, it served its purpose. So I'm gonna come through here. Just wanna get the all the edges. See, this one's going to have to be trimmed. I can tell you that already. But they are ratty. You know, as they're shabby chic for sure. For sure. They are not, you know, some kind of precise type thing. Although there are flowers that you can make that are quite precise, but they're not in my wheelhouse yet, my skill set. Not even do I want to do them. I like something ratty. You know that. And uneven and imperfect. Okay, so now this is what it looks like. You might say, well, Brenda, that looks kind of sad. Well, wait to see what I do with it. I'm going to trim some of this up. What I like to do is kind of round it off. Anyway, I must have gone to the post office because he ain't picking up the phone. All right, so I'm just going to go on the sides and I'm just going to pull it out. Just pulling it out. And this is where you find if you should have cut it some more. Like if you didn't get a fold that you needed. And cut into that. Just keep pulling it out. This is where it gets kind of fussy. Because it's where you find where you have to trim it. And how you like it. And you'll have it pulled out I don't know how many times before you decide it's good. The way it is. Or if not, you're going to do it again. But I'm trying to find the middle here. This is going to need trimmed a lot right up here. So it will work. And this appears to not have been cut through, so I need to do that. I thought it looked kind of funny over here. It didn't get cut. Okay. See what's being said. Lots of paper flowers, headbands. Decorating a purse, yes. That's what my big idea is. I want to do purses. Mm. 
Yeah, I used to do paper flowers at the site some time ago, but I used to do them regularly. But they just keep getting nicer and nicer. And I think, too, I don't know if you've seen some of the paper perforated uh, lace paper doilies that are out there now. They're perfect for making... Um, see, I'm used to sitting up higher on this and seeing. They're perfect for making um, flowers, if you want. So, you can make your own. Okay, I'm going to trim this a little bit more. Of course, it's not coming out as nice as I'd like to. I think you get the gist of it. You just have to keep playing with it. So, I like to get it to the place where I got the middle down and I have things rounded off pretty good. If you have friends that don't know about this class, do me a favor and tell them. Because this is going to be something new for us and it's going to be great. It says it's like making a pom pom. A little bit. But not. I wouldn't mess around with a pom pom this long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I just gotta see if I have some little um, funny things hanging off of it. Now the cabbage roses, I showed that in a video quite a long time ago. But there are different things you can do now. So, but these are just a couple of things. I'm going to stand up so I can look down on this right that way. I don't have to fuss it. Yeah, it's coming along real nice. And I've got these little frayed edges, which I like. But yeah, I wanted to kind of come down in the middle a little bit and then stretch out. Let's Hello, see. Cynthia from Bolivia. Who's that? From Bolivia. Who's from Bolivia? What's her name? I can't read it. Are you from Bolivia? Really? My aunt's from Bolivia. No kidding. Yeah. I'm the I, one that lives below. <laughs> what's that? Javi's from Chile. Yeah, I'm the, the below country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my aunt's from Bolivia. It is like me. And my cousin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got lots of Spanish people in my family for not being Spanish. <laughs> I love them all. Okay. Okay, this looks pretty good. It's smushed down pretty good. So now what we got to do is the center, if you want to do it center. Now, you have a choice. Um, on this one, I made what I do for the center of some of my pet cabbage roses and put it in there. So that's one way you could do. I put it right there. That's where I put it. Mm -hmm. Or I could take the easy route, which would be a paper flower or a little fussy foo-foo. Or... I know, I got a bunch of stuff in here. I think this is too big and too pink. Yeah, that's, that's, ooh, that's pink. Yeah, that's really pink. <laughs> that is really pink. But it looks nice on there. Yeah. You need like a, like a in-between color. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with this. That's there you go. Good. And so, okay. So I'm going to really do it nice and easy. I don't know if you can see over here. But I have something on my workbench that you have never seen on my workbench before. <laughs> oh, she says she's from La Paz. Oh, I can't remember how close it was when Milka lived to there. Anyway, she's from Ella de La Paz, Bolivia. Ella vive allá. No? 
Okay. All right, so can you see? I've got a glue gun. What do I always say about glue guns and jewelry making? No. No. <laughs> no, don't go there. But here's the one exception to the rule. And that is if you're working with fabric or paper. This is mulberry oh, paper, which is my favorite of all of them. All of oh. them. I can't read. I can't read. You know, they, they put people's names in red, and I can't see it. Kathleen Kelly, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to glue you. this booger in here. Yeah. And let's just make it easy on ourselves. Yeah. A lot of this stuff, people glue it. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Just be careful you don't burn your fingers. Yes. So Very I'm going to put a little blob in here. And I, I use a little one. I don't use a big one, you know. You put that glue stick Because in I don't, you know, it's it's more precise when you got little. So get it in the middle. I always burn my finger for some reason. Yeah, some well, reason. You, you haven't used one enough, maybe. Oh, I have. It's just, oh, you have? You just ridiculous. burned yourself, huh? I just, I don't know. You're just a finger burner. Yeah, my fingers are sensitive, I guess. Okay. It's, it's probably the wire. <laughs> I have a bunch of these yet, but the ones that I had were just in such dismal condition that I bought a new one. Yay. Oh, the glue gun? <laughs> yeah. I think I see some. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah, I thought, oh, maybe I should carry some. I was like, no. no. You can get one in a dollar store. A don't dollar. tell me you don't go there because we all go to the dollar no, store. Right? $1. Even I will admit <laughs> that. I go there. It's a okay. dollar twenty. It's going to fall off. <laughs> No, it is. It's been there for many, many times. Okay, so now here's a little trick. I'm not going to do it right now. You can go up a little bit. Because I want to move forward. Onwards. I think everybody here knows it, but Javi's my niece. Oh, yes. And she's my sidekick. I'll even show you the chicken. Uh, the chicken. <laughs> That's my chicken. Yeah, she loves that chicken. <laughs> Now I get to show it on the screen. <laughs> okay, so pretty, pretty, huh? Pretty, pretty, pretty. So what you could do now is if you had some little pearl cabs mm -hmm. or some little flat backs or something, Ooh. you could just put a little dip dot. Hot glue is okay in this case. Yeah. And put it on it. Or if you want to go the cold route, this is something new. I don't have it on site. I just tried it, but I like it. E6000 makes this called Fabrifuse. It has mm. extreme stretch. Nah. So I guess that means, like, you know, if you put it on a garment that stretches, you're okay using it. Sweet. It has low odor, too, which is always a plus because yeah. usually E6000 is a stanky. Could, but anyway. could you have used that with that flower attached to the bow that you just made? To here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I could. Cool. But I like, in this case, doing something like this. I like the hot glue because I could push down on it and, it and it's instant. Yeah. You know. With this, I have to wait for a little while. Yeah. But, like, this would be good, like, it, I'll show you what it looks like inside. It's got automatic, you know, you just start squishing it and it comes out. Um, and you would just like just put a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Maybe one there. And you put some little sparklies in there. Rosemont teas, if you have the flatter ones, would Ooh. be good. Um, you know, you're, sky's the limit. It's up to you to decide teeny <laughs> tiny, itty bitty baby buttons would be good. So that's how you do that one. So the basic thing about it is basically you need one of these deals. And you need the fabric, and it's up to you how wide you cut it, how long you cut it. But I will tell you, the longer that you cut it, the more layers you have to go through, which you might be good with that. But I only, I didn't have that many layers with mine because I, I kind of wanted it to be a little flatter. Because like I say, if I'm gonna make, let's say, this one, if I want to make like a super brooch or something, I might only want to have one with this kind of dimension, you know, and maybe the rest f a little flatter or something. I don't know saying this goes together, but it's an idea. I usually would put them like that. And what you could do is you can sew them together if you want to do that. 
or I got this this cute. Have you ever huh. seen these? They're scalloped all around. They make a great box. Yeah, I only got a few because I wanted to see them. They were kind of spendy, I thought, for wood. But uh, they're just so cute. So anyway, what I would do is I put one here and then like this and then here maybe and then I, I could just glue it up I could just put that on there you want me to you want to go ahead and make a brooch let's do it oh that's going to be a brooch yeah and then it might have streamers but I could go under here and put them on so I'm trying to think where did I put the rest of my um these things I have a whole box of them Oh, well, we won't worry about it. I don't think we'll use that many. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. And you know me. This is assemblage. So you know me. I'm going to want Hi, Darcy. movement. Darcy. Now, I could. Here's an, here's an idea, too, for you. I could do this where I just do one. And the rest could be pearl buttons all coming around like this. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I'll go with that. I kind of like that idea. So do I. Let's see this. I'm kind of not wanting to glue them all together now since I thought of that. Yeah. Because I think it would be... That would even be prettier. This would be lovely, wouldn't it? And just some pearl buttons around here. Now, this one needs a companion. <laughs> this is an accent piece. Yeah, I'm not going to glue it. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to do that. I want to I wanna make them... You know, I'm, I'm probably going to use this. But um, yeah, just make it I want to do... Like the pearl buttons coming along this side. That would be lovely, lovely. And I really like how this came out, too. Now, we don't have any of this stuff at the website at this time. But we will have it. Sooner than you know. I just have to get these kits for the class packed up first to make sure that the students get, you know, everything that I promised them and then some. And then after that, I can start thinking about, you know, how to part it out and, you know, put it on the website and all that stuff. I would wear that on the bottom hem of my jeans. Well, maybe it would drag in the mud. <laughs> oh, how often do you go If it mud? works for you, if it works for you, what fun, great laugh with the chicken. Yeah, the, oh, the bottom yeah. of the jeans, yeah. That'd be on the nice. bottom of the jeans. Yeah, I might put nice. it, like, right below the knee. No, because at the bottom it's nice because it's like a little accent, especially if you're wearing. It's a gonna shoe. flop in dirt. Depends what kind of jeans you're wearing. <laughs> well, I wear mine long. I don't know. You have to show me that one, Miss Kate. Yeah. Because I could be wrong. I've been wrong many times. I've seen times. some that were cute with that. Uh, yeah. Like, like I'll tell you what I like. Not too short. Sure, I like the jeans that are embroidered all the way down the side. Mm. And when I was a kid in high school. That was hot stuff. Maybe it was for you, too. Maybe for you, Kate, because we're close in age. Um, but you had to sit there and do all that embroidery, yeah. you know? And it was, main, you know, kind of painstaking. Now you can buy them like that. Once in a while, you can get a pair like that on sale. Um, usually not. They usually cost some money. Or you could just go get a bunch of really cool-looking appliques. And you could patch them down the side with fusible webs. So you wouldn't even have to sew that much. And then you could embellish them. And oh, baby. And then you could have, like, a denim jacket and put some of them on and maybe trailing down one sleeve. Why not? Right? Yeah. We're on Capri's, Colleen says. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. Years ago, my friend Annie and I did this little comedy skit for a family night um, that we used to have a family night all the time. Everybody come. And so um, she had a flamenco dress on because she danced flamenco with somebody that she taught how to do it. She's from Puerto Rico. And uh, then she said, oh, Brenda, I want you to do a dance with me. I said, I don't do that. I don't have to do any of that. She says, well, we'll just make up something. And so we decided we were going to do a dance to that song, Tequila. Remember the Tequila? Yeah. So, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. so we did. And I had um, a black mm -hmm. skirt long, slid up the leg, 
and on the back of it, I had a bow right on my butt. <laughs> Great big bow right on my butt. <laughs> this made me think of it. So there you go. You can make one put on your butt. <laughs> Somebody said to me, do you know your bow is right on your butt? I go, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. I do. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, on the outside edge, I wear capri or ankle length jeans. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, you just get more ideas and where you go on. But anyway, I did say I was going to make a cabbage roast today, so I better get on it because we're going to run out of time. Okay, so what am I going to use? I thought maybe I'd use this. Isn't this pretty? This is some specialty soy that I got to so just have a look at it. Oh, T says I have been putting clusters of old rhinestone pins, but these fabric flowers would Yeah, and they'd be lightweight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know how well they would wash, but some things you don't wash. I'm like denim jacket. You don't wash it that often, so it could go there. Or you could just, uh, you could put a pin back on. Like, okay, so this is what it looks like on the back. I didn't show you. Not much to it, you know. But you could yeah. take and cut a circle of felt and put on it. And what you do when you do that, I'll just use this for example. Say this is your circle of felt, this piece. And you would cut a slit here and a slit here like that. What happened to my pen? I'm always losing my pen. Here it is. So I'll just, I'll just write on here. This doesn't matter. This is just a template. I would put it like right here and right here. Okay. So you'd need, well, this is a big piece, but you know, you would need fairly large, fairly large pin back or else just tailor your holes to go with whatever you've got. And then you would take it and thread it through there so that your stem is coming up in the back. The pins behind as you can see it. And then what you would do is you would glue it to the back of the flower, okay? And then you could pin it on the stuff and things like that, that way. Or really, this is finished enough to suit me. I'll just yeah. put something on it, but, you know, it just depends. You know, say like, for example, say you like this flower, you don't want to use that uh, wooden back. And you want to put this on here and you want to build something else out around the edges. You know, that's a thought too. Or if you were making a huge honking flower or something, you could use this. This is, um, I think this is a three inch one. I think this is a five inch. This was for a different project. I didn't get the, I had, I needed one that was two and a half and two inches too. And I didn't get them cut. But anyway, let me show you how I do a cabbage flower. And there are several ways to do it. This is the way I do it. So if you don't like this, then I'm sure someone else on YouTube can show you a way you do like. Or maybe you'll figure it out yourself. And sometimes that's the best way. That's what I'm doing. I, I'll watch a video on something, you know, and I'll look at it. And I'll go back and look at it again. And I'll bust. Well, let me try that. Until I start trying it, you know what happens to me. Exit stage left, and I go another way. And it comes out altogether different. But I got my inspiration from that piece. I got my start from that, you know. Pin on your cowboy boots. Give yeah. you a shabby sheet. Yeah, oh, if you can pin it on them. Um, yeah. I was looking at something about that, like that, where you put it on a chain or something. But I don't remember. Whatever works. I'm, I'm thinking the leather might be too thick, but I could be all wet. I haven't had a pair of cowboy boots for a long time. I used to have some really cool ones that were all embroidered and went up to the knee. But that was way back in the day. So anyway, I take the end, okay, so this is about, about two inches or something here, and I grab it on the end. I mean, I just do it, because that's me. I'd go do it, and then halfway through it, I said, oh, yeah, i got to tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> Not the best teacher sometimes. Okay, so i got this piece, and... In this case, I'll probably bend it in half, kind of, kind of ish, you know, and it slipped a little bit, not to worry. And I'm going to make a knot. This is going to actually be the center of my flower. So I'll pull that out. Okay, good enough. So that's pretty tight. So now I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to 
aim to get it right over top of the one I just did, or nearly so. Yeah. And I'm going to do it, I think, one more time. And so you can see this is why I leave the, the, um, the end. How did I do I can't remember what I did. <laughs> I was talking and I can't remember. You do, ever do that? It's like you've done something a whole bunch of times. You get to talk to somebody and pretty soon you don't know what you're doing. You can't even remember anything. That's me. Okay. So it's kind of a blobby knot. You know, if that bugs you, just keep working at it until it doesn't bug you anymore. Okay, but I'm going to push it down this way, the other way here. Okay, and I'm going to pull this piece under. In fact, I might just trim this a little bit because I can. I don't need it anymore. Okay. So this is fiddly. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, you may start working on it and have to take it apart a couple of times or not. Sometimes I'll make a bunch of them and I'm just, you know, cooking with gas. Everything's great. And then I'll hit a wall, and I have to take a bunch of them apart. And you just never know. So anyway, I pull my fabric out. And no, I have probably at least two foot, maybe two and a half of this. But again, however much you use depends on how big you want your flower to be. Okay? And if you get it really long, say you cut like a five-inch strip, it would get a little unwieldy until you got to the end. So just, you know, know that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to just fold it. I'm just going to, I'm rolling it. And I'm twisting it as I go. Roll and twist. Roll and twist. So can you see how that's coming out? Can you see that? Can we zero in on that, hubby, so they can really see it? It's just going around it. And try to keep it pulled up as tight as you can because what will happen is these loops will pull away and you'll just have more sewing to do, you know. So, because there is a little sewing with this. A little. Actually, maybe not. You could probably hot glue the back and it would probably take, I don't know. But normally I do sew it. If you had a little circle of felt you could glue it to that and save you some sewing see i've got some play in that one i don't like that so i gotta pull that up a little bit so okay so i just keep going until it's big enough to suit me So, you know, how wonderful and how spectacular it is, it's going to depend a lot on whatever star you selected, whatever. This is really pretty. I, I bought it to put a little bit in the class kits, too, so I don't have any on the site. All I have on the site right now are just some remnant pieces, but if you could only see how much sorry I had, if I had it stretched all across this room, it would probably fill most of the floor of this room. I have so much. But I, it's not just sorry either. I have satin, I have lace, I have tulle, I have muslin. Bought a big bolt of muslin. Tore it all down in the strips. That was a lot of mess, let me tell you what. But you know, just keep your thumb on it to keep it together. And it's coming along, see? Now it seems to me like you used to buy your sorry and it would be a little wider than this. I bought so much sorry here in the last, oh, I don't know, three, four months. And it, it seemed to be narrower strips, which if you're making like, if you're going to use it as an, on part of a neckline, that'd be fine. But um, if you're not, okay, I think I'm going to stop here just for sake of time. I'm going to cut it right here so there's a little bit of tra trail. And I'm going to turn this, and then I'm going to, I am sorely tempted to hot glue this, since I can sit in here, but I don't know. I'm going to get the end with some So I just have some, you know, I'm going to have to thread this. Okay, I'm going to sit this down and hope it stays, because I don't have pins up. If it does, okay, it's going to be fine.
Yeah, I'm tempted to hot glue that. But if it doesn't come out, it's, well, if it doesn't come out, all I have is a minute out of my life doing it, but, you know, it'd be disappointing maybe for you to see that. I'm threading a needle. This isn't, like, real important. And I got big cotton darning type needles for this. I don't have a needle threader. I forgot to buy one. I thought I had one. But anyway. All right, so I just pull that down. And if anybody has never threaded and thread a needle before, that's how you do it. Just take some thread and stick it through the, the eye. Sometimes it's fiddly. If you have a bigger eye, it helps a lot. And pull it down double, trim it, and then make a knot. Sometimes I make two knots. Bye, Andrea. She has to go, okay, yeah. thanks for coming, honey. Yeah. We look forward to seeing you in class. Yeah. Very soon. You know what? I don't need another knot. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to pass. Where's the end now? Where'd it go? Uh, do I need to do it again? No, I see it. It's oh, there. Oh, it's right here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I love doing this. I could get in the zone. I don't, but, you know, time will tell how much of my time this is worth. You know, we'll see. A lot of people make beautiful flowers and sell them. But, um, we'll see. Maybe that'll be you. Right? That would be great if you did. Okay, now I'm starting to mush this all down so I can't see my middle and I want to see my middle. Okay, oh, here we go. Yeah, there it is. Almost looks like a little rose. Okay. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to try not to stab my finger, of course. And I'm just going to try or attempt to go through the entire thing. one side to the other. And I might just push down on there to get a little leverage, you know. And then I will pull through carefully so that I don't tangle this going through, which I just did, of course. Of course, well, that that's okay. It's not the end of the world, we can fix that. Okay, so I got one through, okay. Yeah, this is the back, this is the front. Okay, so now I'm going to just come through this side. And I like to do this because it, it gives me some leverage to get the needle all the way through. If you don't need to do that, then good for you. My fingers are just not that strong. Okay, so it's through... That's not holding it perfectly, but it's holding it good enough for now. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around here and there and I'm gonna tack it a little bit. And I'm gonna try to not let a lot of um, thread show if I can. Sometimes that gets a little tricky. Okay, and I go back through here. Now these other ones I have in my box, you know, they're bigger than this by a lot. But they're made the same way. Very same way. And I just keep making sure this part is visible and showing. Because I'd like to see that. If this was a little more frayed, it might be more interesting, huh? <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that there. I'll take care of that in a minute. Anybody here like to sew a lot? Do we have some seamstresses here? Like to? I got my sewing machine. My husband bought it for me. And it wasn't an expensive sewing machine by any means because I really don't know how much I'll use it. You know, I have some ideas, but I don't really know, you know, how much I'm gonna do with them. Um, 
But yeah, I used to sew an awful lot. We made my wedding dress, my mom and I, we made it together. In fact, you can read about that in my book. Okay, so we're almost there. I have this piece hanging down. I don't know, I might leave it for a while. I kind of like, it kind of, I find it a little bit pleasing, you know. There's no, no reason why I couldn't if I wanted to, you know, I could do it. Okay, it's together, and that's the main thing. And I, don't, I just don't want to have too much thread on here. I'm going to try and take this around to the back. Just don't want to have too much. So what happened, I wanted to tell you guys this too. What happened is last time I said I would do um, a gifty or, you know, do a little drawing, and I couldn't because YouTube disappeared all the chat. So I, I knew some who'd been here, but I couldn't remember everybody, and it wouldn't have been fair because I couldn't really do a drawing and include everybody. I was so mad. We kept going back to see if it had come. You know, maybe it wasn't showing up yet, whatever. So we're going to try and go back through here after we sign off and see what we got. Normally what I'd do is just come back the next day and it'll all be there because sometimes it doesn't show up right away. But if we just leave it up, um, I think we'll be all right. So anyway, so I'm going to clip this off. But that's how you do it. You know, this is not like a big effusive sample of it, you know, that kind of work. See, I pulled this up through. Did you see me do that? A little nib that's in there. I pull up through a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to trim this down here because I don't want it. So what do they have to do to uh, get in the... Give yeah, away. just be sure you say something to say me while we're live. Here. live. Yeah, if, you say, if you're on here and you haven't minutes. talked to me yet, then you're not entered. You have to say something, because we don't know if you're there, if you don't tell us, so that's why. So be sure you say something before I finish up. Okay, so there it is. It just looks like a knot, right? This looks like one of those little frog knots. But it depends, you know, what you use and, and what you come with it. You, know, is it you can put little pearls in the middle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. I'm going to put some in this. Okay, now this one. Is, you know, you can see it's much bigger, but it's done the same way. But then I added this one. I made a little tiny one, and I added this and put it right in there, uh -huh. too. So there's two of them together on that. So you could do that if you want. I could use this one to put in another one if I was going to do that. Now I'm going to look in my little basket here and see if I have something that would look good in there. No. I don't like that. Oh, Kate's like, that's so pretty. Well, this, thank you. That's not working. It's like pearls or something. Shiny. Yeah, it needs a pearly thing. I pro hey, you know what? Here's something. Here's some stuff. And that's another thing, you know, get your bling out. Collect your bling up together and see what you got. No, that's too big. Yeah, that's way too big. That's a thought. That could be sewed in because it's a Rosemont tea. But I could, I could glue it safely. Hi, Susan. She says she's late to the party. Oh, you're not late. Nobody's ever late. Yeah, I think I'm just going to put that in there. I like them off to the center, off the center a little bit. Hello from upstate New York. Spend a lot of time in 1920 outlet in Burbank. Oh, yeah, that's when they had it. That has been gone for quite a long time. They had two, actually. Um, there was one right next to the factory, and there was one over on, Hi. I want to say Magnolia. Uh, it was in a little strip plaza that Mr. Bernie owned. And they had that one for a long time. And then he, he just didn't think it was making enough money to warrant keeping it. And he wanted to rent it to somebody else that we could make more money. So here, let me bring this up. I'm going to put just a dit dot right here. And then there used to be 1928 outlet stores um, in malls at one time. 
Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had a number of them. They had one in um, somewhere greater Los Angeles area. I can't remember where exactly. And then they had them, you know, they were like franchised out, something like that. You know, they had that for a while. It was something he tried, and then the long run, he wasn't crazy about it. So he didn't anymore. But yeah, there are those rumors. I've been in both of those places. I know exactly what you mean, Leslie. I know exactly about those piece of places. The one that he had that was on Magnolia was so pretty. And um, they really enjoyed it. The girl that ran it really enjoyed it. She had a little girl, her name was Rita. From, she was from Brazil. And, uh, oh, she just loved her job. She just loved her job. She cried and cried when he shut it down. It wasn't just the money. It was that she would not have. But it was, it was the you know, her, she had worked so hard on it you know, to make it special. And she just... Susan said, the pearl, the pearl is a perfect choice. And Betty says, I love the cabochon. Ca yeah. The cabochon. Do you know what this looks like now? A nest. Yeah. A bird nest. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put those in there. So, you know, I've always said, don't use hot glue, blah, blah, blah. In this case, because it's fabric, it's oak. It'll be fine, so long as you press it down in. It'll be okay. And make sure it doesn't glurp out all over the place. But what they used to do, I don't know if it's, they still do it in Burbank, because I haven't been over there for several years now can't believe it's been that long but anyway um on friday nights they would close down some of the streets and one of the streets they closed down was magnolia and they bring in the food trucks and they bring in bands and all and all the young people would come out and they used to dress like uh, rockabilly style that kind of style they would dress I never got to be there for that, but they told me about it. Well, my friend Maribel told me about it. She used to love it. She'd go running out and she'd see some young lady with a really cute outfit. She's, I've got the perfect pin for that. <laughs> she ended up selling all kinds of stuff. They had so much fun with that store. It kind of reminded me a little bit of our store that we had. Even Mel said that from the pictures. He said, it looks kind of like my store. His had slat wall and stuff like that. It looked more like a retail place, but um, yeah, there were similarities. Okay, so there we got that. Looks kind of like a bird nest, almost. You know, whatever you want it to be. So that could be, no, that's too bright. No, 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 no. Could go with that, yeah. So if you had some this size, kind of, sort of, going across, um, you would sew them together. That's what I did on this one that I made a long time ago. This is a lot bigger pieces. And I accented this with seed beads, which is fine. And I put some, I put a brass rose down in there and I put a great big Palmer clay bee. Oh goodness, I just did all kinds of stuff. And then I sewed them together. There's There are actually four. There's, um, this is the biggest, and then these two are about the same size, and then there's a smaller one up here. And then that kind of balanced out because on this side, um, I had my handmade toggle, so it kind of balanced out this, so it worked out. But anyway, yeah. What did you glue the brass with? The hot glue back yes, I sewed it in. Oh. I went around the petals underneath. Sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. I like to look at it. I never did sell it. Some a few people had asked if they would buy it, could buy it, and I'm like, I don't know. I didn't want to wear it. I, mean, I don't think I've ever worn this, but I just like to keep. I'm glad I did because I could use it for an example of other things. Some things you keep for that reason when you do what I do. So anyway, so that's pretty much my teaser class for you. We learned how that we could make a pretty no-sew flower. That came out pretty. 
That came out nice and even. Didn't look like it was going to at first, did it? It kind of looked like a hot mess, but it's it's the way you pull it out. Pull the petals out, make sure everything's cut through, and then you trim them. Sometimes I, I like to trim them around kind of in a U shape, you know. Um, and this one, I had like two and a half foot of, um, sorry, this. And this is not long enough, but that this is tie dye. This is so cool. Oh my goodness, so cool. You know how you can distress your sari or your muslin and your cotton and stuff like that more if you like it stressed, distressed. You get um, like one of these deals. I'm not going to use this one because this is sturdy. I've used it on metal a lot, but you just go over it and it'll tear it up good <laughs> for you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, girls. I did. <laughs> if you didn't enjoy it, I had fun being with you. I had fun doing this. So anyway, so that's where I'm at with this today. And I will let you know what I decided to do with this. Maybe out this weekend, I'll go ahead and make this into uh, a button brooch of some kind. Wouldn't that be pretty? Oh, so pretty. Or this way. Maybe I'll do both of them, huh? Why not? Okay, so if you are able to take the class, I know some can't. They've got other things going on. They're just not able to this time. That's fine. But if you're able to take the class and join us, the sign-up <clears throat> is at the, the website. Also, um, you get to be in a Facebook class where you can ask questions. All you have to do is tag me anytime. and I'll, If I'm online, I will come and answer your question. So you have a place in between the videos, you know, to come and participate, upload pictures, you know, whatever you want. And then uh, the classes are going to be June 16th, and that one's going to be Friday, of course. They're always on Friday, and it's going to be all day, be 10 to 4 with a lunch break, short lunch break. And then the rest of the classes are going to be half days, and they will be... June 30th, July 7th, July 14th, and July 21st. Those are all Fridays, half days, those. I have to have a little piece of time in between the 16th and the 30th because I've got some stuff going on that I need to attend to. That's very important in my life. So um, we're just going to have a little bit of a period of time where you can practice the techniques I teach you on our full day session and share them. You know, Start making flowers. I mean, really, it's prep for the rest of the class. You may need those flowers if you want to finish the project. You may want to go ahead and make yourself a sack full of flowers. You know, I might do it too because I just love it. I mean, I have how many flowers do I have? Let me look and see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, that's upside down. Thirteen, see this one's real tiny. Thirteen, fourteen, this one's a mess, but that's fifteen. Oh, sixteen, I made sixteen flowers already. Woohoo! Woohoo! Okay, so thanks for coming today, you guys. So be sure you say something because we're going to roll back and see who was on here and we're going to do a count and then we're going to do a drawing so we don't lose you because I felt so bad when I said I'm going to do a drawing and then I couldn't because I didn't know who was on here. I felt like I'll be, I hope nobody gets feeling bad about that. So we're going to take care of that now as soon as we say goodbye. So, yes, it's good. today's Good Morning is sponsored by coffee. Isn't it always? It is for me. Okay, so you're very welcome, Betty. Thank you, Kate, for coming. Thanks, Leslie, for coming. Dara, so glad you were here. Um, who said they're looking forward to the class? Colleen. Yeah, you know, I think that's interesting, Colleen, because when I first introduced the class a little while ago, you're like, hmm, I don't know about this because it's not your thing. But then you said, you know what? I might find out that it is. So I'm going to do it. So I appreciate that attitude. I really do. Let's see. I'm going to scroll back here and see who else was with us. Um, Suzanne, of course. She likes the pearl. She loves the cabbage rose. Yeah, there you go. Um, 
See, uh, Kate, and then Andrea had to go. Yeah. Kathleen Kelly. There's some people be before that, too. So I'm kind of counting. Uh, what's her name? The girl from Bolivia. Cynthia Caballero. Can't see if there's a double. Cynthia. Is there a double? Caballero. Yeah. Oimos? I can't read. Really, tough as a deer or no. Anyway. It's a yeah. O L M O S. Olmos. That's it. Yeah. There was an actor by that name. Olmos. Um, let's come down this way and see who's here. Yeah, go to. Two, three, four, five, six. Hey, Debbie. Oh, I didn't say hi to Debbie. Yeah, Debbie's Hubbard. here. Hubbard. How you been, There's sweet no Debbie? Now. Okay. Okay, well, we'll get a count here. But anyway, thanks so much. And I will announce on the description of this video, you know, where you comment there, I will announce there who won the gift. And um, please... Be watching for that if you were here because some of you I may not have um, your dress. So I will need it in order to send you something, okay? So thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. I hope you'll come again next time. Why don't you take the class with us? You know, that's the one thing that's so cool. Um, Cynthia made me think of it because she's in Bolivia, okay? It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can take these classes. Isn't that cool? And you can make new friends and all kinds of stuff. Really good friends. You might think, oh, on the internet, I can't make it. Yes, you can. I mean, I, well, Kate and I are tight. <laughs> you know, I, I go down to see Kate sometimes. In fact, I'm long overdue to go see Kate. Um, and she comes here too. And Beans, I've known Beans for 20 years. Beans has been here to see me. Different ones. But even if, that had never happened. I still feel very tied to each one. Colleen has been here. We had a nice dinner out one night. So, um, yeah. It's amazing what you can do on the internet and make new friends. Birds of a feather. So, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging in there with me today. And come and be in Uptown Boho. The sign-up is on the class, uh, is on the group under Classes and Muses if you haven't done it already. Okay. Thanks yeah, so you, much. Yeah. Bye.